Hey everyone, Mr. Herb Shadow here, back to uh, get on with my Trivium discography review. Today we're going to be talking about my personal favorite tri Trivium album, which is their fourth album released back in 2008 entitled Shogun, which, as I mentioned, it's not just one of my favorite Trivium albums of all time, but it's one of my favorite metal albums of all time. And I'm very, very, very excited to talk about it today, so let's just dive right in and see why I love this album so much. First off, we'll jump into some of my favorite tracks, which is going to be all of them because it's such a good album. But we'll start off with the opening track, track number one, Kirisu Goman, at least I think that's how you pronounce it. I might be butchering that, but it's a really fucking awesome song, and it's a perfect way to start the start off this album. It's got this really cool like acoustic bit in the beginning before it gets into this crazy, like not really crazy, but like this rhythmic drum pattern that starts off the song right after the acoustic bit, and then the guitars come in, and then the bass comes in and stuff. And it's just got this really cool riff that builds up into the main riff of the song, which is this heavy chugging riff that just it has so much meat and power behind it. And then the vocals are just super, super heavy at the beginning. It's just a lot of power behind Matt's voice in the beginning. And it really, uh, like, heavy, powerful, in-your-face verse. And then it repeats that a couple times with some heavy screaming parts. And then it eventually progresses into the chorus, which is this long, melodic bit with some really great melodic singing from Matt and some fantastic uh, melodic guitar playing for both Matt and Corey and just has a great sound to it. And then it just has this really heavy bit right before it goes into the solo, which is just a really fantastic solo. And it just really shows up how good these guys are playing the guitar. And then it just it builds back into the that uh, verse and chorus again. And it just has this great melodic feel to it and it just ends with the verse I mean with the chorus and it just has this I mean just great sound to it it's perfect opening track and I love this song to death and the, the third time I saw them live they actually played it and it just really got the crowd going it's just a really fun song track number two torn between Sila and Charybdis I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing those right but of course the uh famous Greek sea monsters from the Odyssey and this story is a, I mean this song is of course about the Odyssey and it is about when Odysseus and company are sailing between Scylla and Charybdis obviously and it's just got this really this song is just really heavy it's got this cool like guitar effect in the beginning in the intro and then it has this really heavy riff to it and it's really heavy in your face verse and it just builds up into this really uh, heavy, powerful chorus. And of course, the standout thing about this song is all the solos. You've got a solo from Matt, a solo from Corey, and not one, but two bass solos from Paolo. And they're just fantastic sounding. It's really low tone to it. It's really cool sound. It's just really awesome bass work. And it's just, it's just awesome. And I love the flow of the solos. It alternates between the uh, guitar solo, bass solo, guitar solo, bass solo. It's just fantastic playing all the way through. It's just an amazing song. The second time I saw them live, they played this song. It was just another song that really got the crowd going. Cause it's just an amazing song. Track number three, Down From The Sky, which is one of the, the main singles off of this album. This uh, shorter song comparatively to some of the other ones on the album, but it's just got some great melodic playing. The really powerful, uplifting uh, chorus. And it's it has a great sound to it all the way through. It's just a really fun song live. I saw them both the first and second time. Uh, first and third time I saw them live, they played this one. And it's just one of those songs that really gets the crowd going. It's just a really awesome song. Not much else to say about it other than that. Track number four, Into the Mouth of Hell We March, which is another song about the Odyssey. It just has this great sound to it. And sort of this uh, big soaring anthem sort of for the for the for the verses and then it has a more fast paced melodic uh, chorus and it's just great guitar work all the way through and then it like sort of towards the middle of the song it pulls back and gets a little more simplified and then it jumps right into this really heavy duty fast paced solo it's just great fast technical guitar playing in the solo this is really heavy stuff right there and it just sounds really good the way they alternate between they, they start off heavy soft heavier soft or yeah they start off they start off heavy then they soften it up a bit in the middle and then they get really heavy at the end and just has a great progression to it and this is a really good song definitely worth checking out track number five is my personal favorite track off the album which is probably the most well-known song off of this album which is throws of perdition 
which Trivium plays at pretty much every show they do now. And it's just a really amazing song, whether they're opening with it or ending with it. It just really gets the crowd going. It's just a really amazing song. There's fantastic lyrics, fantastic guitar work, fantastic drumming, fantastic everything in the song. And it's probably the reason why the song is just so good. It's actually the reason I bought this album, because I heard... I, right when, it was back when I first started getting back into Trivium a bit, when I was actually not just casually listening to them occasionally when they came on Pandora and stuff. I heard the song, like, wow, I need to go buy the song on iTunes right now. And then I ended up buying the whole album because I just decided to check it all out. And it was just so good. And it was because of this song. Anyway, next track, track number six, Insurrection, which is another personal favorite of mine off of this album. It's just a really heavy song. It's probably the heaviest song on the album. It's just it's really crushing, heavy. It, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just really heavy. And then it's got this amazing solo. It's just really fast-paced and technical. And it's crazy. And just the song is just a really great feel to it. It's just really heavy and really in your face. And it's just an awesome song. Track number seven, The Calamity, which is probably my least listened to song on this album. It's not the best track on the album, but it's not a bad song either. It's just not as good as some of the other fantastic songs on this album. So it's kind of hard to compare it. But it's a pretty good song. It's got some great melodic bits, some great guitar work and all that. So it's a good song. Definitely worth checking out. Track number eight, He Who Spawned the Furies, which is another song based on Greek mythology. It's about uh, how uh, the Titan Kronos uh, swallowed his own children, obviously the Zeus and the other Olympians. And it's sort of about that stuff and some other stuff that happened around the same period in Greek mythology. It's just a slower song with some really heavy bits in the nose. Got a pretty good song, sound to it. Track number nine is another personal favorite of mine, which is Of Prometheus and the Crucifix, which is about how the Titan Prometheus stole fire from the Olympians and gave it to humanity. And, of course, then was punished for it, and he was tied to a rock where every day he was forced to have his organs chewed out by vultures, and then they'd regrow the next day, so he'd have to endure it all again. So it's just a really cool stuff they talk about in the song. And the musicianship on the song is just absolutely amazing, especially the guitar work. Just really great riffs, really great melodic playing, and an absolutely amazing solo. From both Matt and Corey do a little bit where they do some shredding, and then together they both do this great harmonized bit. It's just it's such great vibes coming out of it, and it's just amazing sound to it. And then the last chorus really throws in a lot of really great melodic playing. It's just, I absolutely adore the guitar work on this song. It's just so good. Track number 10, Like Callisto to a Star in Heaven, which is yet another song about Greek mythology. This one telling the story of Callisto, who was, I forget, some sort part of some sort of, uh, like, not, I, I don't really know how to describe it, like, they were followers of uh, some goddess. I don't know which one. Anyway, they're supposed to be chaste virgins. And then Zeus comes along and he disguises himself as the goddess they follow and lures Callisto away and rapes her. And then, of course, she's not a virgin anymore, so she gets banished from this group and, so, and sent to live out on her own. And then she gives birth to Zeus's child, and then Hera is really jealous and turns her into a bear. And then her story just keeps getting worse and worse, and then... Her son grows up and then becomes a hunter and then he almost kills her and then Zeus takes pity on them and turns them both into the constellations Ursa Major and Minor, which is a ridiculous origin story for those constellations. But it's a really cool story and Trillian does a fantastic job of telling that story with her lyrics and their guitar work. There's just some really great riffs in this song. There's an amazing feel to them. And there's some great melodic bits and... Just, I really love the, the, the lyrics in the song, especially the line, Hate not the flesh that makes me, but seek what lies beneath. Which, I don't know, it sounds really cool and philosophical. And I just really love the way everything comes together on this song. And then we move on, of course, to probably one of the most ridiculous songs on this album, which is track number 11, Shogun. Which is the title track, and it clocks in at 11 minutes and 55 seconds. And it is a really long song, and it's just jam-packed with goodness. It's got these amazing heavy riffs in the beginning, and then it pulls back to a very soaring melodic anthemic chorus that just makes you want to sing along with it. And then it builds this up, and then it drops back to a really calm, quiet, chilled-out part with a really deep, low singing from Matt, and it's just really cool sound to it. And it has this really cool soft solo, 
and then it repeats that part and it starts building up and that gets really 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 heavy with some really heavy screams and shredding and all this great stuff and some fantastic solos and then it builds back up into the final chorus that just soars above everything it's just a fantastic way to close out this album it's just got such a great feel to it and surprisingly last time i saw them live which was a couple years ago now they actually played this song in its entirety right after kirisu go man it's just it has just a great sound to hear those two songs which book and this album which are about uh shoguns and like samurais and stuff like that which is sort of a callback to uh matt's japanese heritage since he's half japanese so it's really cool Plus, these songs really go together really well. Like, the, the intro acoustic bit from Kirisuko Men is the uh, main chorus riff from Shogun. So, it's sort of cyclical in that way. But they start and end with the same sort of sound. And that's it for the main tracks. But I do want to give a shout-out to the bonus tracks, which have a bit of a different production style. They're a bit more raw and stuff. I actually believe they were produced by the guys from Iron Maiden, which is kind of cool. And it introduced three new tracks, Poison, The Knife, or The Noose, which is a really fun song. I really enjoy it. Upon the Shores, which is another pretty cool song. And finally, the track number 14 on the, the special edition is a cover of Iron Maiden's self-titled song from their self-titled album, Iron Maiden. And it's just a really, really well-executed cover. It's a really fun song and definitely worth checking out. I just thought I'd mention those bonus tracks, even though they're not on the, uh, the, the original release. So, that's it for the tracks on this album, which... As I said, I love all the songs on this album. They're just really good songs, and I really wanted to talk about all of them. So now let's go in and talk about the actual band members themselves. So looking at what they've done compared to the last album, The Crusade, they've really stepped up their music game. It's just really great sound to it. So we'll start off Matt and Corey on guitars. Just wow. The guitar work on this album is top-notch. It's very technical, very melodic, very shreddy. They can do all this different stuff, and it just comes together really nicely. It's just a great feel to it, whether it's the really cool melodic bits on Kirisuko Man or the the crazy shredding on Torn Between Cell and Tribus or the more melodic stuff like on Throws of Perdition or the really, really heavy, chuggy stuff like on Insurrection. They've got it all in here, and they jam it all in there, and just, they stack riff upon riff upon riff upon riff of amazing guitar playing. It's just These guys are one of my favorite guitar duos out there and it really shows on this album because their musicianship is just fantastic. And Paolo on bass doing some insane stuff. There's just some really cool bass parts that really stand out on Kirisu Goma during the choruses. And of course there's Torn Between Sail and Tridis where he has those two fantastic bass solos that just really make me go wow this guy is a ridiculous bassist and this is why he's one of my favorite bassists out there currently because it's just it's a great feel to him. It's great sound. And it always turned up nice and loud in the mix, no matter what song it is. And it's just got some great stuff going on here. And he's just a really standout player. And finally, Travis making his last appearance with the band. He's doing a great job on drums. I think it's his best drumming performance with the band to this to this day. Or well, obviously he's not with them anymore. But of the four, the, of the four albums he played on, I think this is his best one. Just really great stuff where he's doing crazy fills and really fast paced stuff like the parts in Shogun, especially during the, the heavier bits in the middle, where he's just going ape shit on the drum kit and just playing really fast and the double basing is just so fast. And he's doing a lot of interesting stuff, cool fills here and there to keep things interesting. So all in all, he's doing a really great job and like I said, it's his best performance with the band. So these four guys come together to make some really amazing music and all of them are playing at the top of their game, and it really makes uh, makes it easy to see why I adore this album so much. And I know I don't usually give numerical ratings because I don't really believe in establishing a new numerical value on something as subjective as music, but I will give it one to this one because it is, in my books, a perfect 10 out of 10 because it is just such a great album, and it's definitely worth checking out. If you're new to Trivium, this is the one I would recommend first because... Like I said, it's my personal favorite album, and it's just got so much great sound to it, and every place gives this album four to five stars, because it's just such a great album, and not just me thinks that it's one of the best albums that Trivium has done. So, obviously, be sure to check this one out, and 
If you like me and you like what I'm doing here and you want to see more of my stuff, you can check out the rest of my videos. Like this video if you enjoyed it and of course subscribe so you can see more of them. And I will see you guys very soon with the next album in the discography, which is obviously their fifth album in Waves. But until then, I've been Disturbed Shadow and I will see you guys in the next video.